and uh, for the various, uh, uh, we have uh, got the similar kind of uh, good match for the various uh, moment of issues. This is the uh, the SMD distribution, SMD profiles for the, the various uh, uh, moment of issues, and that in the near field, uh, the high buck diagram drag uh, law is predicting well. In the Stokes Cunningham drag law is. Uh, comparing better in the far field. Uh, after uh, validating those models, we have used this model in designing of a uh, scramjet combustor. Uh, when we have, uh, now in this uh, program, we are trying to uh, demonstrate autonomous flight of the scramjet integrated vehicle using kerosene fuel at Mach 6.5. And uh, that this technology demonstrator has to uh, uh, these things uh, demonstrate uh, autonomous uh, fire, this firing of the scramjet for 20 seconds. Uh, these are the various technologies you wanted to prove it the scramjet engines, aero propulsion integrated configuration, aero thermodynamics, and materials and the hot structures. Uh, this is the, the scramjet engine. The flow is coming, uh, the free steam flow is getting compressed by the vehicle nose, and uh, this compressed air is entering into the intake. There it is undergoing number of shocks and then it is going to the combustor. In the combustor, uh, liquid kerosene is ejected. It is getting uh, uh, these things uh, evaporated, uh, uh, breaking up, and then evaporation, and then the reaction is taking place. And the standard combustor, we have to do the minim minimization of the total pressure loss, less rise of the static temperature due to minimize of the dissociation loss, and minimization of the wall temperature. When we have uh, started uh, designing these things, uh, first, uh, some uh, position of the struts we have uh, considered, and we, we first iteration we have uh, seen the combustion efficiency was 51 uh, percent. It is very poor. The thrust is also not adequate uh, for the mission. Then we have uh, changed uh, the various uh, start locations, and the combustion efficiency has increased. Then we, sh we saw the last two struts are not uh, contributing to the thrust. We have released that thing, weight has reduced and the overall thrust has improved. Now that around 450 kg thrust when we have got it, that was adequate for the mission. When we have taken <coughs> these uh, uh, combustors in a connected pipe mode test facilities, what we see that the fuel injection starts are melting. Although that surface pressure is matching nicely, but uh, more than 5 seconds we could not uh, demonstrate that uh, engine. Then uh, by uh, just understanding the flow features, we have uh, these things uh, totally new start uh, locations, and uh, this is the new combinations we have given it. And uh, similar uh, the optimization of that geometry we did it with the CFD, and the first started with the 74 percent uh, combustion efficiency, uh, and then again we have uh, redistributed the fuel locations because the advantage of that thing we can uh, see the total flow field where there is a oxidizer, where there is a fuel. And then uh, by uh, looking at that distribution, we can always change those uh, position and we can get a uh, better uh, performance. So nearly 82% uh, combustion efficiency and 500 kg thrust we have got it. Then when we have uh, done those experiments, that our pre-test and the post-test, uh, I think pre-test results was done some with the assumed uh, conditions. Then when they did the experiment, there are little uh, changes in that uh, those parameters. When you have changed those things, they are all uh, matching very nicely. And moreover, earlier, all those uh, very exotic materials we have tested, Nambiam, tungsten alloy, but uh, with the new uh, uh, this is position of the struts, even the stainless steel, we could uh, get a uh, stable uh, performance up to 20 seconds. And this uh, combustor, these uh, struts were used a uh, number of times. And we have uh, got a much benign thermal conditions by understanding the flow features. And we got a very uh, good uh, height. And then that uh, finally the flight uh, hardware also was tested. And then uh, we got a very good match with the CFD data. <coughs> and uh, coming to the uh, slide, jet vapor process in the cushion atmosphere as well as in the presence of the ISP process and numerical study. Very asymmetrical drop and break of models are explored versus the predictive capabilities in characterizing this way. Jet penetration for the diesel injection in question and most of the well are very experimental measures. For subsonic cross flow, ETA model predicts a better flow characteristics compared to the TAP models. 
and SMB decreases, but particularly the risk increases with the increase in the cost flow and the risk in the general city. And uh, for the supersonic cost flow, cost flow, diagonal matches gate penetration and the radial distribution of the SMB profile oil with the experiment. Dynamic drag model overfitting the particle and this particle drag. Validated project breakup model is used for the design of the electricity <coughs> as well as the fiber of this country. Thank you. Questions are there? Thank you. So, thank you, sir. And just to highlight, this work was uh, done in uh, collaboration with Dr. Manna, C. Anand Mandaka, and Dr. Rakhmin of the Rudy Cashier. Thank you. One pressure plot, where does it go back? In the scramjet itself, one pressure plot. Both of these are also scramjet. So let's find in back. And yeah, this one. This CMP and experimental shock that is coming. I I just want to know. Which one? I just want to know the reason CMP that shock is there, but I cannot. That that was like spike. No, this the spike. The spike in the combustor. There was a middle plane. There, that combustor is having a separated by a two wall by a mid plane. And the, that mid plane, when that is that impingement, uh, that the flow Mach 2, uh, this flow is coming and impinging on that mid plane. So that is the junction that is high pressures are coming. There was no measurement. But we have seen check that kind of pressure comes with just simple uh, uh, non of relations. If a uh, Mach 2 flow uh, impinges on that uh, point, we get that kind of high pressure. And there was no measurement, that's why it was not uh, showing that. Measurement was not there in that point. And this, uh, how much tolerance you have for these errors that uh, any, uh, we any have done? I have not presented okay. for the scramjet uh, combustor. We have nearly compared 25 uh, experimental results and compared our uh, computations. From there, what we are telling, uh, when we are using the first chemistry, because you uh, finally what we are doing it for a end to end simulation, that the whole vehicle is being simulated. I am not shown all those results, nearly 30 million read points, and it takes one and a half uh, months to uh, get one simulation. There, we cannot afford to have a multi species uh, reaction. We are doing the first chemistry. When we are doing the first chemistry, first chemistry means wherever we are uh, uh, these things. Uh, um, uh, that's the moment they are mixing, full reactions are taking place. So your performance will be slightly higher. Slightly higher but most of the things, uh, this thing, fuel injection takes place in constant area uh, combustor. So there the mismatch in that uh, A will not matter much to the overall thrust. But in the divergent portion of the combustor, but that, that's the major thrust for, uh, uh, producing element, there the match is within 5%. Mm -hmm. So in the thrust, what we are uh, telling, whenever we are giving this data to the designer, we are telling this is the thrust uh, tolerance is within 5%. That 5% variation they take care of the design. Okay. So, any other question? Can I ask one question? This was for kerosene, sir. This is not kerosene, liquid kerosene. I just want to know which surrogate you use for kerosene. Uh, generally, when we are uh, using the JK, that's the uh, aviation kerosene only. Uh, we are, uh, we are uh, experimenting with uh, many other uh, uh, other eight, uh, just uh, uh, JP7 and the JP7 surrogate that uh, RD15, uh, RD10, these are the, some of the Russian squares. They are uh, having uh, both the uh, endothermic characteristics and uh, I mean to say high density. The density plays a bigger role in uh, studying. Very nice presentation. I have a couple of questions. Uh, first, what software was used for this? Uh, this was uh, mostly uh, the CFX and the fluids. Uh, second question, uh, when you talked about the droplet breakup models, uh, are there any well-known models when a shockwave interacts with liquid fuel? Are there any, do you expect any of these models to work when a shockwave interacts with the ligament or a blob, let's say? Huh, that is, uh, yeah, in fact, uh, our whole purpose of uh, these things, uh, using this validation, was to see that which model can give a better prediction. 
like I am just telling it, uh, tab and eta. Now we are very much sure that uh, tab we should not use, we should use the enhance uh, eight. And other uh, things, uh, the, both the uh, RT and the cage RT is having his zone uh, uh, where it operates nicely. So, through the validation studies, uh, mostly we are using this RT. And uh, mostly uh, uh, for our design <coughs> purposes, we are using this RT. Yes. But we don't, I mean, we don't understand, I guess we don't know if, if a shock interacts with these liquid fuels, we don't know if any of these models are good enough because all these tab, e tab, they're uh, for a low low speed low, low, low speed, low speed flows. Flows. Yeah. And then that that, that two things. One is that uh, your uh, drag on those uh, uh, I mean to say the particles mm -hmm. that also four five different drag models are available. Yeah. So this thing Stokes drag flow is a very uh, eight and that was uh, giving very good uh, results for the mm -hmm. supersonic flows. So otherwise that uh, that individual interactions, uh, we have not gone into details about those things. Mm -hmm. Our <coughs> idea uh, the aim to give the design data to our uh, these things are uh, designer, commercial designer. So all these fundamental studies uh, generally we don't have much scope and we don't have the time either to do that thing. But it will be a good problem to pursue the uh, this I mean to say academic studies in that thing. Thank you. No more questions? So we would like to thank this once again, sir. And now we will move to our next question. So our next presenter is one who contributed task by Adit Portnis. Title is Influence of Exit Expansion Angle on Global Global Harbor Dual Soil Ejector. Profile that is a flare profile, 
and the flare angle. And obviously, the fuel is the air flow rates are also bad. Now, in this study, we have uh, investigated, uh, investigated the effect of the exit, exit expansion angle. That is basically the effect of the flare. And uh, for in this case, we are doing uh, uh, a complete spray, not just uh, a test on the gas. And we are doing a uh, high speed, uh, uh, that's high speed uh, PID. Uh, but we have only done global flow field over here because uh, we are using around 3000 liters per minute of air. So the uh, velocity we get is around 40 meters per second. And that at 40 meters per second, uh, for full resolution, we are not getting time resolved data. So we thought it would be better go with global flow field as of now. And then go with the smaller uh, uh, ROI for uh, higher FPS and uh, time resolved data. So this is basically the, some details of the injector that I'm uh, using. Uh, the flare exit diameter is 45 mm, and that is what I've used for normalizing all the length scales. For uh, normalized velocity scales, I've used bulk axial velocity uh, using this uh, exit diameter. And uh, the geometric solar number for the radial solars, the primary solar is 0 0.77, secondary is 1.14. The idea behind having a stronger secondary solar is that we can control all the recirculation zone, etc., by uh, controlling a secondary solar. So we can keep it dominant so that uh, whatever momentum loss is happening when liquid interacts with uh, primary air streams, that we can compensate by having a stronger secondary solar. The flow speed is 40% and 60% primary secondary. And this is also governed by the blade angles and the height of the actual solar. So in, our, in this study, we are using five, uh, we have uh, kind of experiments for five cases, uh, which exit expansion angles are 45, that is half angle. So 45 to 70. And uh, yeah, so this is the uh, schematic for that. This is the uh, uh, schematic for the experimental setup. The working fluids are air and uh, water. And the flow rate for air was uh, 2,000. Uh, 900 LP, water was 150 uh, ml per minute, and the diagnostic technique was high peak PIV, and uh, it was done on spray and not uh, using uh, normal sealing particles that we do. So the spray <coughs> is not neutrally buoyant, but uh, that was not our concern because what we found out in previous experiments was that even if we get ideal flow field with uh, gas phase, it does not translate when you use liquid phase because the momentum that is transferred from the liquid to the air and the uh, momentum loss that happens over there uh, causes a lot of uh, changes in your downstream flow. So we will not get uh, realistic flow up to flow into gas phase as well. So you have done directly PIV on the speed. So uh, this is unconfined flow and, uh, and for non-reactive transition because it's water. And a large chamber was just used to collect the spray. So uh, I'm beginning with my results. So these are the actual velocity contours. So these will give a basic idea of your recirculation velocity and the extent of the uh, recirculation zone. So I'll just go one slide ahead. So from the streamlines, you can see that it is actually a CTR, so a, a central toroidal recirculation zone with two vortex sides. So as we progress in different cases, there's some changes that happen in the flow field. I will go back to the previous slide. Yeah. As you can see, as you increase the flare angle, because the flow adheres to the flare surface, you, because of Poanda effect, you get uh, changes in your recirculation. The flow basically expands, and as it expands, you get slightly increase in the width of uh, CTRC, but you don't get much change in the length. So we are speculating that most of it, there is some change in the length, but maybe taking place inside the solar, we cannot see that. And uh, so uh, also increasing the width of the CTRZ will result in decreasing the spread uh, because of mass uh, continuity. So you can see uh, the reverse velocity is because the uh, strength decreases, this, uh, you can see the reverse velocity is decreased as if uh, it's not dimensionally is from 0 0.71 to 0 0.62 or there will be 0.35. Now what is interesting is for case 4 and case 5, those are 60 degree and 70 degree half angle flares, you have complete breakdown of CTRZ. So that will be slightly clearer in the next uh, This human you can see there is a disappearance of the vortex side in case 4 and in case 5 there is no vortex side as in there is this completely conical breakdown. So over there the recirculation zone 
is negligent in the strength is so less that it cannot restore the flow, uh, the flow that is expanded and is coming out of the sphere.
we are seeing asymmetric for the case 1 and 5. What is the main reason? It is asymmetric for which cases or 1 and 5, case 1 and 5. We are seeing asymmetric. And next question is whether that all the plot is like instantaneous or average given. No, this is this is all average. The whole right of not having instantaneous plots was because uh, we are not getting uh, uh, time resolved data. So we thought there is no point to give instantaneous. We rather give a time average plot. So time average means like uh, I mean why we are getting that asymmetric plot. <coughs> so asymmetric thing may be uh, uh, a different orientation of the solar. Maybe the veins don't end at the same plane. So you will not have exactly symmetric thing. Also, the confinement was slightly open at one end to be, uh, keep the laser sheet to the, as in, to not obstruct the laser sheet because it is spray, so it fogs up the whole uh, system. So it kept a small slit open, which is and the slit is on the right side. So you can see all the streamlines slightly, slightly weaker on the right. So that was the reason for the uh, uh, as in, there's no for not having symmetry. For but that's the same thing for gas rays. In completely unconfined flow, and that is perfectly okay, But my last question: What the delta T used for the PAV measurement? Delta T was uh, 10, 10 microseconds. 10 microseconds. Yeah. Because actually, that the, so for 2,900 liters of minute, it was around 10 micro, uh, microseconds. Thank you. Now I am inviting Professor Samu Desar. So please facilitate our session chair. Unfortunately, we didn't have two speakers, so we may have tomorrow. So, 